Um, yes, yeah, so we are we are group number two, and we were assigned chapter three, uh, where the, the author uh, presents a um, process that he refers to as the regime of congestion. And our uh, intention with our um, um, essay was to compare this process with uh, other harmful processes in in urban development. Over to you, Ruth. Thank you, Franz. Thank you, Bupan, for the wonderful presentation and the great book review. Um, we're looking at the third chapter of the book, and that's the regime of congestion. Um, our membership consists of Lori Kay, uh, Franz Libertson, Eva, and myself. Uh, the title is very packed in itself. Um, However, um, the, the author looks to uh, unpackage the theme of congestion as he sees it through the, the lens of automobility. So uh, there are many paradigms and, uh, that order and, and inform congestion in cities. However, the, the chapter looks at the paradigm of congestion by characterizing mobility in Bangalore and uh, problematizing it and uh, generating solutions for it in that particular context. Um, the term regime uh, is, has been widely used in fields of social science to indicate a power-laden entity that accomplishes a model role. And um, in this case, uh, he, he picks the, the regime of congestion to, to, he views it, that it reconstitutes the nature of streets in, Benga, in Bengaluru with the intent of privileging the physical and discursive occupation of street space by private automobiles. And by doing so, it shows that the regime's uh, politics are ambiguous and they're marginalizing the mobility needs of the poorer inhabitants of the city. And therefore, from, from this chapter, there were two themes that uh, were very, uh, visible and that's the theme of uh, uh, authoring and uh, uh, gentrification and also uh, how the technopolitics uh, constellation plays into this and how it has been in instilled in Bengaluru and uh, it, it, it emerges that the, it, the technological and political spheres are very complex and interconnected and um, and the context specific to Bengaluru and its history um, as, as we viewed this in this essay is that we found that the regime of congestion is self perpetuating it, it results in a lock in of a system which is unstable, carbon intensive and, and, and inequitable. And therefore the theme of inequitability is inherently linked to the perpetuation of this regime. Um, and and uh, the visions and descriptions between the urban poor and other groups of society has therefore evoked the notion of othering and uh, was ex explored with regard to blame being apportioned. Um, the, the urban technopolitical regimes are powerfully reordering the field of negotiation between civil society, government agencies, and political society in Indian cities, thereby diminishing the rights of the poor and the marginalized in the city that they live in. In the process, the cities appear poised to make the transition away from a more inclusive politics that granted up and poor some measure of occupancy rights instead of uh, it's a hostile politics marked by crafting of exclusionary spaces whereby the poor are actively marginalized to service world-class aesthetics, um, which is increasingly becoming the norm. I leave to Eva to uh, bring out how the theme of uh, othering and uh, gentrification manifests itself, itself under this regime of congestion in Bangalore. France. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I'm going to continue, as uh, Ruth mentioned, with the othering. So, in the regime of congest congestion, this this chapter that we read, Gopam Gopakumar for, uh, focuses on evolution of Indian urban society, especially in the Bengaluru, and especially on forming the urban poor since the 1970s. Um, the urban society became polarized. It was caused uh, by different opportunities of jewelers for life. 
this was deepened by what we called the blindness of policy, who simply, instead of solving social problems, tried to follow the to cope the fast developing world. So what the chapter reminded me of was the book uh, In Their Place by Stephen Crossley, who, uh, which is a book about poverty and about poor people. And this is where he, where Stephen Crossley explains the term othering. He doesn't come up uh, with that, but he explains uh, this term. And this is how people who, uh, in this case, financially disadvantaged, are othered by the rest of society. It's a process of drawing a line between the more and the less powerful. And the story of Bengaluru explains how urban society, which are taxpayers who want, uh, Gopakumar explains or describes this uh, group of society as taxpayers who want to live in a nice and clean environment. And then there are those poor people who came to the city to live the same, maybe the same life like the other group, but they came from rural areas where it was hard for them to live and uh, they they saw the opportunity to come to the city and to become better life and it was not possible for them because they had no opportunity for a job for uh, for their home and this was uh, the reason why these groups became uh, to stand against each other although it might seem like one of these groups is a villain. We think, or I think it's obvious that the villain is the local government who, had, who has put uh, solving social problems on the other track. Instead, uh, it followed the dream of making the world middle class. You have two um, minutes left. Oh, seriously. Wow. Uh, so following this, we also talked about social exclusion and peripheries, actually cultural peripheries inside the city. So we should skip to gentrification. Okay, so um, the author does not speak of gentrification, but uh, we think it's a, it's a um, sibling to the process that he describes. And um, the, uh, the four characteristics of gentrification is um, the reinvestment of capital in a neighborhood, uh, the social upgrading by an inflow of middle and high class groups, changes in the built uh, landscape, and the direct or the indirect displacement of low income groups. And uh, in more recent definitions, gentrification is not limited to, to um, to um, housing, but uh, it includes um, any process that displays um, a soci socioeconomic weak group uh, due to reinvestments in the in the urban landscape, uh, such as um, uh, open spaces, green areas, waterfronts, etc. Um, and this occurs due to a a, a passivity of of states. Um, where the, the housing market have uh, become uh, um, um, uh, a market like, like any other market, um, like a commodification of housing. Uh, and this is um, the, um, the consequences of, of dereg deregulating the housing market um, are escalating housing prices housing prices, which ultimately will displace the socioeconomic economic regroups. Um, and this is uh, one overlap that we, uh, that we could see with, with uh, the regime of uh, congestion, but we could also notice some differences, which uh, 
Ruth will mention in our conclusion. Um, our review, as, as you've seen, focused on the themes of inequitability, and that is through the automobility lens. And uh, we noticed uh, that there are similarities between the regime of congestion and the two themes that have been discussed by my colleagues. Um, that is the impact uh, vulnerable and uh, that the inequalities are enforced and also that this fits into the cycle of poverty and uh, strengthens uh, its presence or rather extends its roots. And um, the differences between this uh, regime of congestion and gentrification is that uh, a neoliberalism and, uh, uh, and, and, and a lack of policy um, are, are favored and uh, Whereas the, the regime of congestion is uh, the result of action of policymakers to benefit certain groups of society. And that's why we uh, concluded, as Eva mentioned, to find that the, the policy and the government are the villain in, in this case. That's great. Thank, Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Great, um, we can open the floor for discussion now and especially encourage people who did uh, peer reviews for this group to, to comment. Okay, so it's us again. Um, actually, I like the, the, the review article that was done by this group. Uh, I actually agree with them about the concept that they have mentioned uh, regarding um, the poverty and uh, inequality of, uh, of sharing uh, because they highlighted very, very nicely um, how these policies will, 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 will lead to the poor getting poorer and, uh, and this will um, lead to gentrification, what they call, what they uh, explained as gentrification or maybe displacement and the widening of the gap between uh, the poor and the rich, uh, which which is a bigger problem in itself. Um, however, um, I wanted to, to, to highlight or to, to ask them to clarify if, if the book really um, mentions um, the response of the poor towards these actions. So what did, what are the, the the poor have have to find a way to to deal with the situation so if this was highlighted in in the chapter that they have reviewed or uh, is it tackled in a way to say what 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 happened or what did the poor do to cope with the situation of being marginalized in a sense Sorry, I, I'm not sure I understood your question. Yeah, I just wanted to to ask if the author said, uh, mentioned in his chapter what was the response of the poor towards the marginalization that happened. So there there was some marginalization and it still continued. But what are the the uh, reflections of the poor? So what they did did they do to to cope with this? Uh, with this uh, marginalization, if we can say. Th did I make it clearer or not? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I understand your question. And I think it was not explicitly explained in, in the book. It, it's just like the case that we talked in uh, before when we were speaking, uh, speaking about the group number one and they, these are those examples of those things that we would appreciate as a reader we would uh, appreciate appreciate more background what i was talking about before because this was just briefly like explain the state not the background if you know what i mean so no there there was no explanation of the the response of the poor. 
it's just that they became poor in and their that they might they might be uh, a reason or they their way of life that they didn't have a choice to to make different uh, might be a reason of conf maybe conflict between them between the poor group and the other group. This was just the feeling that the chapter provided. But so maybe maybe the response uh, um, I was expecting the, the author to highlight not just uh, a political response or a very uh, strong uh, standpoint, but the, the their method of coping with um, uh, the lack of public transportation, for example. I think you have seen, you have shown in your presentation a very nice photo. I think in the second uh, or third uh, uh, slide, where um, uh, there were practically no cars in the street. So um, th 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 this is a photo, obviously not of a middle class or a high end area. It's the, uh, um, a place where um, uh, mostly uh, the marginalized are moving. So they are moving more with motorbikes and uh, they are using tuk-tuks and other modes of transportation. And I think maybe this is uh, some way of coping with uh, this marginalization uh, now that you have shown this picture in your presentation i'm just thinking about it um i had another question on um the term of gentrification that you used and i think it's very interesting to link gentrification to mobility and congestion issues as well um, but I thought that um, one important point in gentrification is usually one important one point that comes before uh, the investment of capital is that a certain urban area um, has uh, or sees an increase of attraction due to, I don't know, for instance, um, strong social and cultural capital of a certain group that somehow raises the interest in this, this part of town. And, and therefore, I was wondering, um, how do you see this, this rising attraction linked to, um, yeah, mobility or even the problem solving uh, with regard to congestion issues? To make this um, well, yeah, sure. Uh, what you um, um, what you say there? It's it's uh, called the rent gap theory. Um, it's a theory uh, uh, about where uh, gentrification occurs, um, and basically it's about uh, the the um, uh, the gap between the uh, actual rent and the potential rent. And uh, the bigger the gap, the uh, the more likely um, uh, it is that gentrification occurs, um, because um, investors can see a, a, an economic potential in in the area or neighborhood. Um, but when we, or it was actually my uh, uh, suggestion that we that that we. Um, compared with gentrification, uh, but I mainly thought of um, the, um, like the outcomes um, of, of um, planning um, and how that affects the, the poor. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I, um, if I can see other connections. Um, but um, I guess one thing is that um, when you um, uh, if if you uh, um, if you build a, like a, a transportation hub in in a certain area, that will likely uh, increase its um, its um, attraction um, because uh, I mean that pe people want to be able to commute easily. Um, so I guess there is a um, a dilemma there um, 
on the one hand, you 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 um, uh, you don't want to um, uh, affect the uh, the the people living in in an area, but you would also like them to to have access to to good uh, transportation. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I think I can add a little bit of a reflection here, uh, but um, in, I, I think in gentrification in the context of uh, what Gupa Kumar uh, uh, is explaining might not uh, is not a, a, a good thing and might not be um, just because building a hub for uh, public transportation will uh, will make this area more attractive or so on, but it might be just the relocation of people to build a new highway, to build a new flyover, to, to build something that will, will eventually uh, benefit the, the decongestion uh, approach, uh, but actually it, it requires the, 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 the dislocation of the poor to give way to this uh, intervention which um, in itself is uh, something to, 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 to reflect on because this means that the poor have uh, longer uh, travel times, they are uh, getting out of the areas that they've lived in most of their life to make way for such an, an intervention. Uh, and this, this is obviously what gentrification in, in this case or, or how I see it in this case is related very much to what Gopal Kumar says. I'd just like to read out uh, the question from Agnieszka because she has connection issues. So she says, your review contains mostly the summary of the book. I miss your personal opinion about the book, but I have an, uh, another question. Since I am not familiar with social science, I wonder if anyone from your group can relate this book to your research. We have uh, a couple, a minute or two before we go to break, if you want to respond. The question is in the chat, if you didn't understand me. Yeah, sure. I, I see it um, uh, about the personal opinion. Um, I mean, there, there were no real guidelines of how to 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 write the reviews. So, so this is how we interpreted the the assignment. Um, uh, I, I my, my research is on energy, so. Um, I don't think I can relate the the concept of the book to to my research, um, but I am looking at um, uh, gentrification processes in relation to access to energy. So in, in that sense, uh, there there is a connection. Uh, but I don't know about the the other group members. <clears throat> well, my research focuses on social problems in cities and their possibilities to to be solved so I think that there might be connection with the book but more in the theories like uh, I'm not sure if my case studies are uh, comparable to Bengaluru uh, so it would be more theoretical and just uh, marginal, probably. Yeah. Um, my, my research is on uh, linking adaptation and mitigation in the infrastructure uh, in mega projects in Kenya. And um, it's more focusing on the, the policy aspect and how policy tries to take care of the feedback loops that come up uh, when infrastructure has been uh, developed and um, while it might not have uh, a direct touch on the social uh, aspects, uh, the Bengaluru case is very comparable to Nairobi and uh, there are uh, some conclusions that we have made in our study uh, which we find uh, um, uh, are informed by the way the themes that we discussed in the book review are also manifesting themselves in Nairobi. So 
it's something that we relate with, uh, even if our major focus is on policy and not necessarily on the social aspect. Thanks. Um, Great. Um, so we'll take a, a short break now and we'll start again with working group three at 10.